Okay, in this video, what we want to do is investigate the percentage error between the actual calculator giving me the result of sine of an angle, or cos of an angle, or tan of an angle, and the approximation that we're using. Okay, we're going to see kind of like what results we get. So I've decided that we should look at uh, the angles between 10 and 50 degrees for sine, cos and tan. We're going to see what the calculator gives us, what the approximation gives us, and then the percentage error between the two. Okay, so for sine, what I want to do, well, I've put them into degrees uh, down the left-hand side, um, really because they're it's easier to understand kind of like what we're looking at then because we're used to degrees but I'm going to actually be working with the angles in radians because that's how my approximations work so sine of 10 degrees what I'm doing is sine of pi of 18 okay now my calculator gives it to 0 0.173648 I'm going to go to six decimal places OK, so then I've got sine of pi over 9, which is 0 0.342020. Then I've got sine of pi over 6, which is a half, so 0 0.500000. Then I've got sine of 2 pi over 9, which is 0 0.64278. Uh, well, let's round it up to 8. And then sine of 5 pi over 18 is 0 0.766044. Okay? Now, my actual approximation for each of these, well, because sine of theta is approximately theta, then my first one is just pi over 18. Okay? Which is 0 0.174. Five three three. Then twenty degrees, or pi over nine, which is pi over nine. So naught point three four nine zero six five or zero six six, I should say. If I round it to six, and then thirty degrees is just pi over six. So naught point five two three. 599. So then 40 degrees, so 2 pi uh, over 9 is 0 0.698132. And then 50 degrees, so 5 pi over 18 is 0 0.872665. Okay, so here we have now. Um, sine of the angle and the approximation using the small angle approximation. Now the percentage error can be found by subtracting one from the other, okay, then dividing by the original, the sine, the actual version I want, the actual uh, value, then times by 100, okay. So for example, uh, to get the percentage error for this first one, I would do sine of 10 take away my approximation. Okay, now whatever that is, um, I'll take the uh, positive value of it, then divide that by sine of the angle, and then times that by 100 to get the percentage. So... Um, we're going to have 0 0.173648 take away 0 0.174533. Um, okay, so that gets me a negative result. I've multiplied by minus 1 to make it positive. Then I'm dividing that by the original amount, 0 0.173648, and then timesing that by 100 to get my percentage error of 0 0.5. 5.1%. Okay, so it's only half a percent out. So when I've got 20 degrees, so 0 0.342020, 0 
take away 0 0.349066 times that by minus 1 to make it positive, uh, divide that by the original, so 0 0.342020, and then times that by 100. And that gets me 2.06%. So if I do the next one, 0 0.5, take away 0 0.523599, times that by minus 1 to make it positive, Divide by 0 0.5 times by 100, and I get 4.72%. Then the next one, 0 0.642788, take away 0 0.698132, times that by minus 1 to make it positive. Divide by the original, 642788, then times by 100. So that gets me 8 0.61%. So we're up to 8.5% error. And then for 50 degrees, 7, 0 0.766044, take away 0 0.872665, times that by minus 1 to make it positive, divide by 0 0.766044, then times that by 100. And that gets me 13 point nine two percent okay so what we can see here is that as the angle is getting larger the percentage error is getting larger as well so by the time you get to 50 degrees you're almost at 15 percent error by that point so what we want to do is to compare this against um, the percentage errors for cosine and tan <music> Okay, right, so let's have a look at what we've got here. So we have um, the percentage errors for sine going from a half percent when we're at 10 degrees up to almost 14 percent when we're at 50 degrees. Now for cosine, okay, we've got a very small percentage error of 0.00396 percent when we're at 10 degrees. Okay, so for small angles, as you can see, it performs a lot better than the sine. And tan, on the other hand, is a lot worse. I mean, by 50 degrees, you're 27% uh, error, okay, from the actual figure. So it is getting worse very quickly. So why is this? What is causing these differences in the percentage error? Why are they behaving that way? Well, the cosine one, okay, if we have a look at that first, the cosine one is being approximated by a quadratic. Because you've got that one step further with the approximation, because you've got that squared term being there, the cosine curve, so if you think about what cosine actually looks like, looks something like this, right? It's being approximated by a curve that is starting at 1 and this quadratic curve that's going to look something like this coming down, okay? And so it's matching the curve quite nicely. And the fact that it is a quadratic, it's going to match it closer than either the sine or tan curve because they're being approximated by a linear term. So if we have a look at sine and tan, now sine looks something like that. Now theta is just effectively your y equals x line, right? So once you go beyond a certain point, that straight line's not going to be a very good approximation whatsoever. Okay, so as you get further and further along, that gap between the straight line and the curve is increasing. Okay, and so the percentage error is much larger than it would be for cosine.
Now, if you'd matched it using a quadratic, or something like that, you would have got something closer for a certain amount of time. So if we'd gone for Taylor series, and we'd gone through it, and we got to maybe the cubic term, we would have a better approximation in the long run. Okay? Not so useful, but in the sense of it's not... Um, it's not going to be that good, much good to us, close for small angles, because clearly the percentage error is um, small at that point. But the further afield you go, the better the approximation you're going to need. Now, if you look at tan, now the tan curve looks like this, okay? Now, if you think about what your theta line was going to look like, it's going to look like this, your y equals x line. So that at some point, you know, these, this gap between the tan curve and your approximation isn't going to be very useful. In fact, by the time you get to 90 degrees, of course, you're going to hit that asymptote. And so this percentage error, as you get towards 90 degrees, is going to um, increase very quickly indeed. Okay? So that is why these percentage errors are going to be different and why the cosine curve is going to be matched better by its small angle approximation for larger angles than sine or tan.